Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you some code which allows you to go from a blank terrain like this or blank ground with clicking one button you will get a pseudo random generated forest. It's not procedural so I don't have any complex algorithms determining how um, objects cluster together or anything like that. It's not optimized so you can't use it on vast infinite terrains. It's, it's just not that complex which in a way is one of its strengths. This is something which if a beginner programmer looks at, um, they should be able to understand, especially if you jump on the forums and talk to me if you get stuck. Um, this is pretty straightforward code and it's very useful. First of all, um, I've made a couple of parameters so that you can uh, tweak how much of something appears. Now this isn't perfect uh, because first of all, all of these have to equal 100%. If these go beyond 100%, you'll get an index out of bounds exception. I'm sure I could fix that, um, but I just didn't really see the point because we've got four variables and it's not too hard to do. When I first made the code, um, that wasn't an issue, but there was another issue associated with the first uh, approach that I took. And on balance, I think this one is, is actually better. Um, so let's have a look at that. Let's say that we want like a really grassy, rocky type place. So let's put 50% on grass and then 50% on rocks. Uh, rock spacing is two, that's fine. And then let's say everything else is just zero. So this is a sort of, you'd see in um, open plains like that. And that looks pretty cool, right? So it's almost like we're getting close to, to creating biomes. Obviously there's only so much you can do with what we really have here is six different types of prefab. We have three different types of rock, which I've scaled and rotated. So it looks like there's more types of rock. And then I have one type of grass, one type of flower, one type of tree. Obviously, if you have a lot more types of these objects, you have more types of grass, you have more types of rock and all that sort of thing, and flowers and trees, it's going to look even better. But the fact that it looks okay with just six, six prefabs is pretty exciting. So now let's go for a pretty like bluebell forest. So we'll make that 50. We'll make that 50 and we'll make the trees 50 and we'll make the grass zero. And then the tree spacing, we will put to um, four is good. If you have it less than four, it's just too dense. And what the tree spacing means, uh, I'll show you first. Oh, hello. Why are you even there? Oh, because I didn't do the right thing. I did the wrong thing. Okay, let's try that now. Yeah. I have to work on my bluebells a bit. They, they look kind of um, crap. What I had to do was increase, the, I had to scale them on, on Z and X so they take up more room. Uh, but then as a result, the textures look shitty. Uh, sorry, they look bad. Um, so anyway, that's like a sort of bluebell forest type thing. Now what, what spacing does is it ensures that trees can't be placed within a certain distance. I'll show you the code soon, but what happens basically is it sends out a sphere raycast and it checks all around this area. For this case, it checks for four units around. And when it, when it, so every time you go to a position where you can place a tree, it sends out that raycast. And if it, if it hits the collider of another tree, it goes, yeah, okay, I can't, I can't go there. It will go to the next um, position, do the same thing. And it will only go in a place where it does a raycast and, and doesn't hit any tree colliders, doesn't hit any obstacles. Uh, that works for rocks as well, which means that rocks and trees kind of have a bit of a war. And, um, that's an issue with the code. If you put trees first in the code, uh, then they'll take up all the room and then rocks won't have a chance and vice versa. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's say we have, um, we want to have a biome or an area which has 50% trees and 50% rocks. I could imagine that making sense if you had like a pine forest on very rocky ground or something like that or in, in a mountainous region, right? Right, so with the same spacing, and this is 50%, and that's 50%, look, you get two rocks, and you get a crap ton of trees, right? Uh, so obviously, they're not sharing 50% each of the available nodes, the available positions, because the tree method is executed first. The tree method is executed before the rock method, and as a result, it takes up a whole load of space. So, so by, by the time the tree method is is finished the rock method activates and then it can't go in any of these spots here it can't go between the trees here because it has that uh, it keeps hitting that one of these colliders so the only way there can be rocks <laughs> the only spaces that could fit in this particular scene was there was one that could fit there 
and there was one that could fit there, you know, so you could have no rocks as a result of this. So the way around, I'm sure I can, I've got a couple of things in my head which I think could help to get around this, but for now, I just don't care that much. I, I changed the spacing of the rocks to two, and then it's fine. Now I've got lots of rocks, and I've got lots of trees. So, if you want to start out with a forest which has heaps of rocks, heaps of trees, heaps of grass, and heaps of flowers, which is exactly what I want to do, because the, um, in the game you're going to start in a forest which is full of, um, full of resources, full of natural resources. So, uh, what the, the ideal settings for that, that I've found so far anyway, is this. Uh, you have 40% grass, 40% flowers, and you have 10% trees and 10% rocks, and the spacing of the trees is 4, and the spacing of the rocks is 2. So let's have a look at how that goes. So yeah, you get this forest which is just packed full of plants and the trees are spaced out enough. But you may think, hey look, I I'm not so happy with this because I still want to be able to edit it, like I want to be able to use it. Um, I, I want to have a scene where there's a clearing in the middle and there's like an orc camp. Or I want to have a scene where there's a ruin over here and these trees are getting in the way. They're instantiating on top of my ruin. Of course, what you could do is you could instantiate the trees in such a way that they won't instantiate when they detect um, those obstacles, which is how this is set up anyway. But just, just to show you that you can actually edit this in the edit mode, let me show you how. So normally, as you know, whatever you do in play mode stays in play mode and then dies as soon as you finish. But if you pause it and then go in, you don't even have to pause it really, you can just let it play. If you go into your assets and you minimize this and you drag that into the assets folder, now go out of play mode, sure the whole thing vanishes, but drag that back into the scene and you've got your forest again. And that's pretty useful. Now what I can do is that if it randomly generated some stuff that I didn't like, or um, I want to start the game, or I want to just edit the scene, I want to do stuff to it, you know, I can do that now. Let's just start off by breaking the prefab. And then let's hide this water and hide the ground. Now, if I want to make a clearing in the forest, I can. So we'll just see how that looks now. Going back into play mode again, um, turn these on. And turn off that script so it doesn't make a new forest on top. There we go. So that's what this script does and sort of um, how you can use it to have a forest that looks like this. In the next uh, video, I'm going to talk about the code and how the code works to produce this behavior. And in the video after that, I'm going to talk about a paid asset, which is going to be perfect for optimizing this scene, because right now it's not optimized. If you zoom out and have a look at the stats, we're dealing with, you know, something around 40 FPS, and that's just because there's so many game objects. You can improve that by cutting down on how much grass there is in the scene. Um, but, you know, the grass looks pretty cool. And also the grass is going to be um, a resource that we use in the game. So I don't want to cut down on the grass, uh, but just but you, you can. If you don't want to buy a paid asset, you can just you know fix up the FPS by having fewer game objects, basically. And there might be a free way to do it as well. Um, there is a method in Unity which combines different objects into one mesh. So I need to look into that also, uh, but I don't have time right now. So it'll be the next video is about code, and the video after that is going to be about this paid asset which we can use to radically optimize this scene. Okay guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.